What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Pete and I'm back with more Fate Grand Order. Oh boy, take a shot every time you've heard that opening. Don't actually, because you will probably be dead. Welcome back to another What You've Missed. And it has been quite some time since we have done one of these. Predating the Garden of Sinners event, with just no time in between to do anything. Or well, more specifically, I wanted to see if I'd get anything in between that. Which, thankfully, we have. So, let's go over everything that has been done since then. And I can guarantee you now that this is going to be one hell of a list so let's begin サーバント、朝日。料理式だ。挨拶ってこれでいいのか変な決まりだな、全く。勝手は違うけど、適当に暴れてやるよ。to the shock and surprise of no one in the time I have Max Ascended and also 5 Bond. Shiki, of course, being a welfare servant, her appearance didn't change much until this one. Yup. I'm going to talk about that. Anyway, so, Shiki. She has the Mystic Eyes of Death Perception A. Uh, apply Ignore Invincible one turn. Increase Arts Card Effectiveness uh, one turn for yourself, plus decrease death resistance for an enemy, one turn. Mind's Eye Fake A, apply Evade one turn and increase critical strength uh, for three turns for yourself. Yin Yang B, increase NP gauge, level one, or level, I don't whatever, and increase, uh, and decrease HP for yourself. She has Presence Concealment C and Independent Action A. Her Noble Phantasm is... Vijnipatmata, Mystic Eyes of Death Perception. Yeah. Deal significant defense, ignoring damage, and a chance to inflict death. Chance increases with overcharge to a single target. Yay. All right. Profile. A girl seen in the irregular singularity boundary formula. Clad in a dress blending Japanese and Western style, she speaks in a masculine tone and never hesitates in her actions. All are considered to be significantly abnormal in a normal world. Because of her abnormality, abnormal ability to see death, she has found herself involved in various bizarre incidents and has cut them all down. Though she's completely unaware of the fact, she herself has become an urban legend that roams at night. Strength E, Agility A+, plus, Luck A+, plus, Endurance D, Magic Power C, Noble Phantasm E, X. 160 centimeters, 47 kilograms, origin, the Garden of Sinners, chaotic good, female. Her body is light like a cat. Or rather, she is like a cat in, in mind and body. The Mystic Eyes of Death Perception, A. The most unique, uh, the u most unique special ability of all, the Mystic Eyes. Even for Mystic Eyes, this is the rarest of the rare. Regardless if the target is organic or inorganic, the eyes can perceive the concept of death and recognize it as a phenomenon that can be interfered with. The world seen from the mystic eyes of death perception is filled with lines of death. Even with a completely healthy psyche, it is difficult to live with the constant sight of eventual death. Normally, Shiki would shift her focus and try to overlook the world in order to compromise for this abnormal sight. Yin Yang B. The spiral of yin and yang. If you want this to live, you must kill it at once. If you wish to keep this, lose it at once. Whoops. Blessings and loss are two sides of the same coin, just like the relationship between a man and a woman. Never cry, never laugh. Here, Shiki restores her NP in exchange of HP. Mr. Guys of Death Perception, Noble Phantasm. A rank. Nothing. Okay. NP type, anti-personnel, range 1, maximum target 1. By focusing her sight into the mystic guise of death perception, she can see the lines of death for her enemies and sever them. No matter if your life lasts billions of years, no matter if you can heal instantly, no matter if you have hundreds of lives, <laughs> narrow chaos, um, since the eye reveals the target's concept of death, even the so-called immortals will suffer critical damage. Even if a life is not likely to know death, no life can escape death. The end is the same for all things in existence. The Ryogi family has been around for centuries. For generations, they have studied the creation of the perfect human body. For this perfect body, ego is not needed. All it needs are interchangeable personalities, software, and an all-purpose body that can handle commands, hardware. This belief, this faith of theirs, has been proven over hundreds of years of trial, but her existence is quite different than the one they had in mind. Hmm... Man, it almost sounds like the Einsburns copied that. As a result, she has become the current heir of the Ryugi family. 
That is who Ryugi Shiki is. At a glance, she seems cold and hard to get along with. Although she speaks and behaves in a masculine way, she's very girlish at heart and slightly different than a beautiful woman in a man's suit. She tries to act like an outlaw, but deep down she's mature and longs for companionship. Because of that, she will take care of anyone she takes a liking to. As to why she talks and behaves like a man, or why she's particularly harsh toward people with the split personalities, please refer to the Garden of Sinners novels or anime. This is the most cop-out sentence I've ever fucking read, ever. Hey, we don't feel like explaining this character in the slightest. Go read the actual thing. By the way, fun thing they mention the novels, because, huh, would you look at that? The novels never got official translations. <laughs> oh, 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 look, it's never been more apparent that they're literally just translating the text and not trying to make it fit for an American audience ever, except for this point now. But that being said, the novels are fan translated. If you want to take them a look, if you want to take a look at them, I am currently in the process of reading them myself. In case anime is just not your forte, or you fear, like I do, with everything that Type Moon is associated with, that the anime cuts out shit from the books. Oh God, that's sweet. Because no matter how small it may be, everything is important in the realm of Type Moon. That said, nothing changed. All right. Huh? Kigaenai no katte? Hoka no renchu wa kigaeru no? Wari to oshare nanda na, eire te. Yeah, sure. Dan i shoukaku to. Mada saki wa nagai ze, master. Urusai na. Kono fukusou wa kini itte ru nda, kigaenai. I'm not going to change my jacket is not wearing any clothes in her fourth ascension. What is that? I'm going to change my jacket. I'm going to change my どうして着物に革ジャンなのかってピーだろ俺の勝手だ単なる気分だよえ理由じゃなくてどうやって着るかってそれはだなオビの処理と裾に仕掛けがあってオーケーサーワントとマスターか前にもこんなことがあった気が
Anyways. Uh, of course, they are 5 bond rank. They're Ascension 3. Voyage A, greatly increase your C-star drop rate. Marksmanship B, increase your critical strength. Combination C, increase attack. And C-star gather rate for yourself. Magic resistance D. And Caribbean free bird. Deal significant... Free bird! Deal significant damage that gets more powerful when your HP is low to a single enemy. Special attack that damage increases with overcharge. Hmm. Excuse me. And of course, I've kept her in her second outfit because, like I said, this looks stupid. Alright, so... Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed were female pirates during the Age of Exploration. The two met by chance and served under the pirate captain, John Rackham. It's said that Anne was a master of the gun, and Mary charged the decks of enemy ships with her cutlass. Strength C, Agility A, Luck B, Endurance C, Match Power E, Noble Phantasm C, 171 centimeters, 54 kilograms, History, Caribbean, Chaotic Evil, Female, and Bonnie's Profile. Alright, uh, 158 centimeters, 40 gra 46 grams, History, Caribbean, Chaotic, Balanced, Female, Mary Reed's Profile. Anne was born to a wealthy family, but it was always violent and ended up together with a thug. When she broke up with him, she raised her pirate flag with John Rackham. One day during a raid on a Dutch ship, she met Mary Reed, who had snuck aboard as a man. Anne and Mary, partially because they're both women, got along very well and formed a pirate duo. They were the two fiercest fighters on John Rackham's ship, according to multiple eyewitness testimonies. Unusually, the, pi the pair of them have been summoned as one servant. There's no penalty to their stats, but if one is defeated, the other will be immediately incapacitated as well. Goody. I think that one's Mary, the one previous was Anne. ほぼパーフェクトですね。気持ちいいですわ。どうしたの? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? But I don't want to. This is almost... <laughs> For some reason, I'm reminded of a, of a clip from a movie. And I really wish I could remember the movie's name. If someone knows what this uh, scene goes to, someone let me know. It's basically like this kid gets bullied or whatever and pushed around in school. So he goes to like prison and gets taught by this guy to be how, how to act tough or whatever. So he shows up back at school and acts as like uh, a new kid or whatever. But he's super hardcore. And at one point he's walking with this cheerleader, cheerleader or some kind of like, you know, like busty chick or whatever. She's just walking by walking together with him and she's just like you want to take my clothes off with your teeth he just kind of looks wide-eyed and stunned she kind of like pushes him jestingly it's like okay you talked me into it <laughs> and the newest recruit who still isn't up to bond five i just just got him yesterday. Uh, that's Child Gilgamesh, or as I'm gonna aptly refer to him as, Kid Gil. Which everyone, I think a lot of people think he made his appearance in Fate Collide, but that's actually wrong. Kid Gil's first appearance was in the second ever Fate, Fate thing ever, Hollow Atraxia. The more you know. Anyways, I'm thankful to have him. I'll need him for the Zero event. Anyways. He started off like this, and then he sh appears as he does in Hollow Atraxia with his jacket. Which I like the jacket. It, it looks weird without the jacket. I, I don't know. It's just just me. Anyways, Kid Guild, yes. Uh, charisma A+, plus, fair... Uh, charisma A+, plus increase all allies attack. Uh, fair Youth C, chance to inflict charm to one human enemy. Golden Roll I don't have access to. Magic Resistance E, Independent Action A, Divinity B, Gate of Babylon. Deal heavy damage to all enemies and decrease in peace strength. 
Uh, oh, sweet Jesus Christ. And decrease NP strength. Effect increases with overcharge. And critical strength. Effect increases with overcharge. And debuff resist. Effect increases with overcharge for all enemies. Holy shit. That is the most... Why not just say... And decrease NP strength, critical strength, and debuff strength. Then say effect increases with overcharge. Or effects increase with overcharge for all enemies. That would be so much better than riding it. Like that. That looks like a giant jumbled mess. Alright, so anyways. Character scans, of course. With jacket, with that, or... Without, with... Alright. Alright. Again, we're just going to look at his uh, at his character info and parameters right now. We'll take a look at the other stuff when he hits Bond 5. Udux, King of Heroes, humanity's oldest hero. Cruel, merciless, uninterested in the opinions of others, and a tyrant who judges things only by his own standards. None of those words apply to him in this form. Here, he's a humble, polite boy. Strength C, agility C, uh, luck A, endurance C, magic power C, nimble phantasm EX. Take a look at his ascension lines first. I hate that I'm literally just a monument and a few snake jewels away from, or I would have had him ascended to level three before, the, or ascension three before this. Alright, and now to explain why I wanted him at ascension three. As of the current time of this, excluding now the recent Kid Gill, only one character I own is not ascension three or or higher. That, of course, being uh, Babbage. I don't know if I've stated that before now, and that's just because he needs gears. Every other character I own is either Max Ascended or Ascension 3, and of course, I'm not counting Mash. I think she's Ascend... No, she's not Ascension 3. Either way. So, because of that, I've Ascended a lot of people, so this is going to be a bit spastic, but bear with me as we try to get through this. So, that said... I need to be in my casters. Mozart is up first. Having now gotten some fancier robes and whatnot and a mask. Also, he's gotten the angels in his portrait art from his noble phantasm. I don't know how to feel about the mask, but eh, it looks okay. Whoops. There we go. Alright, scroll back up. Next is Banky, who got more weapons. It's, it's literally all. He got more weapons. Neat. Sote, sote. Oh, that's right. I forgot. He's not even the, quote, real Banky. My dear beloved Fran has now gone to max ascension, hitting, uh, going from ascension two to three, which I'm not too fond of three, to be honest, because I don't like the, the thing sticking out of her head. But three looks fine enough. Or max looks fine enough. So it's like, yeah. But I like the veil she has on on the back. And I guess the the uh, conductors on her side aren't as big of a distraction on her actual model as they appear to be in like her, uh, in her actual picture art. Hi, I'm good with words. As I believe I showed before, I ascended Altera finally to three. Yay, she went from this to this. Her, like, side things I decided to j just decide, appar apparently just decide to, like, pop out massively, like expanding into wing form or something. And her blade got a little more crazy. She also gained access to Crest of the Star EX. 
I guess I was kind of overlooking that with the other ones, but, eh, you know, it didn't really matter. Anyways. Oh, yeah. There we go. It looks weird. The things on the side are what weird me out the most. I don't know why. It just kind of looks like some other monster is trying to eat Altera. Okita also finally reached third ascension, now gaining access to Mind's Eye Fake A. So, yay, she put on whatever the hell that thing is. The blue jacket looking thing. Also, it got snowy. Also, for some reason, she doesn't have her sheath anymore. Guess she just got rid of it. Apparently, all of her power is stored in her, what is it, Hayori? Okay. Jekyll likewise hit third ascension, now getting his uh, vest opened up to reveal bloodstains. Because, yeah. He also gains self modification D. Very subtle touch. It always feels like a lot of the dudes don't really get a lot done to their outfits, at least in some terms. Or it's like, if they do, it's instantly redone. It's like. It's like Imia and Diramud both lose. Imia, Diramud, and Ku both lose their shirts or like some form of their outfits. Like Imia still keeps his black suit looking uniform he's got, but he loses like the red jacket. But immediately in their third ascensions, they gain all that back. It's like Ku becomes shirtless having just this part on his shoulder or whatever. Diramud becomes straight shirtless. Third ascension, they get all their clothes back. Why? <laughs> like, I'm not saying I want them all to walk around like like strippers or anything. I'm just saying it's like, it's really kind of a tell that all of the dudes get all their clothes back and all the women are just like, man, how much clothing can we strip away? Ah, <laughs> uh, Whatever you say. JNK also went to third, now gaining a knife and I think a chest cover or something? I don't really know what that is. She has no third skill until her strengthening. She also has a mask that is not anywhere in her portrait art for some reason. Never mind, it's in her hand. I'm stupid. But yeah. Hi, welcome to the Assassin Upgrade Hour, because next is Sanson, who gained bigger shoulder pads. And I think pointier designs on his outfit. Yeah, like his jacket just got like, there's a lot more points on it. Like, right at where his arm is right there. There's like tower points on it where there weren't before. The, the side inlay of it now has branching off spears coming from it. The circle down at the bottom now has more points coming off of it. Weird choice designs, but okay. And he gained access to human study B. Again, really the horses and the uh, designs on his outfit are all that changed. <laughs> Don't worry, neither did I. Again, continuing the trend of uh, freaking assassins, Matahari. Uh, really? She gained a veil? I think that's it. Um, possibly? That. Maybe all she got? Um, I'm gonna have to really go to the thing. She, of course, doesn't have anything. Until her strengthening. Uh. Oh. 
Her clothing became more see-through? Uh, okay? Um, all right. Kagula not only received his third ascension, but his second ascension, going from this to, uh, this. Now he looks like a literal fucking zombie. It's kind of weird. Like, I like the ornamentation and how much it glows, but... God, is it really bright compared to his dark-ass skin and now, like, blood cover red cape. That is the desperate cries of someone reaching his climax. All right. Utica also reached her third ascension. Now getting, now letting her hair down and getting a crown for some reason. And a cape. And a shinier shield. I don't like the crown, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate it when they give them crowns like that. I hate it in Artoria's third outfit as well. She has a third skill, but I don't have access to it. Because that's part of her strengthening quest. But yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> Ku Castor uh, got his third ascension. Uh... Getting a jacket, I think, or like a cloak, which is kind of redundant considering his robes, uh, as well as some shoulder pads. I think that's all that really changed, maybe. That's all that looked like it really changed, aside from his background, but that doesn't really have an effect on his overall character. Yeah, all I gained was the, uh, the cloak. Again, it's kind of redundant considering the man is wearing robes. So let's talk about a weird one. <laughs> I've only just now finally max ascended Nobu. Yeah. Of course, Nobu, welfare servant, didn't change much. She has this image now, which honestly looks super kind of weird. I don't know why. I'm not a particular fan of it. Seriously, why does every girl want to fucking bang me? Like, almost all of them are just like, Oh, if it's just you, I don't mind. I love you. Come, stay with me. It's like, um, no. <laughs> Speaking of Max Ascended Archers, I Max Ascended David as well, who looks like he's trying to resist the temptations to fap. Either that or he's thinking about it looking at me. You know what? I'm done thinking about this. Thank you. Pretty sure I'm still better than you. Hohenheim received his third ascension. Uh, now trading in his book and uh, beaker for the sword that he uses. Which I think is a modification of the, uh, the sword that Ren gave Shiro. I think. He also swapped out some of his uh, his red inlays for purple. I don't know why. All right. Saber Lily hit her third ascension. Now having less clothing, as I've said, removing her. 
Uh, let's see, what did she remove this time? I th she got a shorter skirt. Um, I think she's now wearing leggings. And she got rid of the poofy things that were on her arm. She also now has a ribbon around her neck. Or around that neck area. Whatever the hell that is. I'm going to keep her in her first outfit. I like the knight armor better. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Why do they fucking treat it like I'm the one telling? No, take off your clothes. Speaking of taking off your clothes, Fergus got third ascension. Except he didn't take any off. I think actually all that changed here was he got a little bit more armor and his sword got bigger. Yeah, he got a little bit more armor around his arms and his sword got drillier. Is that a word? No, probably not, but I don't care. This is... Ah, yes, I remember the days that I traveled with my long, giant drill sword. Those were the days so long ago. Diramud, as I've said, has also hit third ascension for some reason putting his clothes back on. And now he sparkles for some godforsaken reason. Oh my god, Diramud is a twilight vampire. Confirmed. Alright. Except he doesn't sparkle in his... Actually, he doesn't sparkle in his uh, sprite for some reason. I don't inconsistency much. I don't know. Whatever. It looks fine, though. Yeah, that's what you'd want me to think. Fucking Twilight Vampire. All right. Uh, Medea Lily also got her third. Gaining, I think, a few more frills, a couple accessories, and a tiny little crown, and a trippy as fuck background. Oh, yeah, that's right. She also gained ephemeral love. I was skipping over those again. Oops. No, oh, whatever. Yeah, a few more accessories. Uh, nothing really of major note. I'll pretend that that's somehow a thing that works and move about my day. Speaking of... Speaking of how that works... Let's talk about Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Lu Bu. My God, what the fuck did they do to you? So Lou went from a normal looking blue outfit, which is just a change from his regular outfit, to whatever God's name that fucking is. I have no words. Lou Boo has successfully fused with Pikachu, as I can see. Uh, the genetic crossover was, uh, <laughs> was a success. Okay. And he has no ascension. All right. <sighs> and then I had to ascend Kiyohime. Didn't have to, but I chose to. Uh, now opening up her fan and changing her color to blacks and reds and her hair color to pink for some reason. I don't really know which one I like better, honestly. I kind of prefer the lighter colors if I'm being honest. I'm not really feeling the darker colors. Ah, uh, yes, I seem to have looked like a dragon by being dressed in black. That's how that works, right? Eric Bloodaxe also achieved his third, uh, his third ascension, still not helping his sprite model. Uh, gaining... Uh, did he get any more armor? I don't think he really did. 
Oh, wait, no, he got a shoulder armor and he got horns. Unfortunately, even that is not enough to help his shitty, shitty, uh, when did he gain? Oh, yeah, he gained that shield. Oh, yeah. Help his shitty, shitty model. I can only hope that when he gets an update, because apparently they've said that they're going to be giving updates to, at least in JP for right now, all of the vanilla servants. I can only hope that that, that that fixes this poor, terrible man. That is not at all how I thought that those words would sound. Orion is also now max extended with Orion sticking his fuzzy ass at my head and Artemis. I can't tell if she's trying to pose seductively or if that's just how she fell down. Really, I'm distracted by Orion sticking his fuzzy ass at my face. Okay. And finally, Elizabeth also received Max Ascension. I just noticed there's a heart on her card. There are multiple hearts on her card. Huh. Oh no, please, dear God, stop. And also, just to quickly make note, the great golden bulge that is uh, Romulus is now also grailed twice to a beautiful level 80 with a beautiful golden outline. Give in to the glory and say with me, Roma! And with that, that's going to be it for now, guys. So, with America on its way, I've definitely got to get some, uh, got to get some interludes out of the way before that happens. So until then, I'll catch you all later. Asta.